In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to access the functionality in the, the G1000 multifunction display. And the first thing we can do is click the menu button. And when we do that, we can see we've got a page menu with a list of options. And we can uh, use the FMS cursor, cursor the, which is the inside rotating FMS dial or knob, to go through this list. And it even tells us here at the bottom to press the FMS cursor and we hit the menu again we can see there's information for the demo mode and once again hitting the menu button and everything goes away next I'm going to show you how to cycle through the different groups and pages within the multifunction display here we can see right now we're in the map group think of it like a folder on your desktop and within this folder we have one two three four five different files in this map folder that pertain to the map and that's indicated by the number of square boxes here and right now we're in the first file of the map folder which is this display that you see in front of you which is the map navigation uh, map so the map folder and we're on the navigation map file within the map folder and that's indicated to us on the top here if we rotate the inside FMS cursor it goes to the next file within this map folder which we can see the blue dot jumped and we're now in the map traffic map file so we're in the traffic map file of the map folder doing that again we're in the storm scope of the map folder here we're in the weather data link of the map folder and now we're in the pause group of the map folder so now if I hit the outer FMS knob I'm gonna switch folders and I'm gonna go from the map folder to the waypoint folder so let's hit that now we can see we're on the waypoint folder and we see where waypoint is given up here and we're in the airport information file of the waypoint folder as indicated by the airport information displayed over here if I rotate the inner FMS knob to go to the next file we see now we're at intersection information and we can see that also here if I rotate the inner FMS knob again we're on NDB information once again VOR information and finally user defined waypoint information and again all of these are in the waypoint folder as indicated by this field being highlighted blue and also by the directory over here so this is kind of like the root directory and then the file name if you want to have an analog to computers if I move the FMS knob again we can see we're in the auxiliary folder and these are the different files and we have one two three four five six now six different uh, pages here so this one is for trip planning next we've got the utility page so we got things like the timer trip statistics schedule GPS status. Here we have auxiliary system setup. And we can change um, different display information on the G1000 on this page. So we can change things like the units that the temperature is displayed, the audio voice if we want it to be male or female. And when you hit the nearest button on the G1000, it will give you a list of all the nearest airports. You can have that filter what it shows you because let's say I'm flying in a Cessna Citation now there's going to be some runway length that I need that's has to be at least that long or greater for me to safely land and be able to take off again and in order to filter out the airport information you can specify if you want a hard or soft runway surface and then the minimum length and when you hit the nearest button it's now going to filter and show you only airports that you can actually land on as opposed to just everything if we rotate the inner FMS knob again we've got auxiliary XM information and then here we've got the system status and that shows us the status and if anything has a problem or is not installed or upgraded in the G1000 we've got this red X and then we've got a green check for things that are operating normally and it tells us the serial number and the version here we see things like the airframe and the database 
So we've exhausted all the different files within the auxiliary group. So let's go to the next one, which is here. And we can see we're on the nearest page. And then again, I think there's seven this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. And when we have seven, the first one is nearest airports. If we go to the next file within this page or group, we've got nearest intersections. The next page in this group, nearest NDBs. The next page in this group, we have the nearest VOR. Next, we have the nearest user waypoints, the nearest frequencies, the nearest airspaces, and that's the end of the list. So, this is an older version of the G1000. Let me show you the same thing in the most recent version of the software. If I hit the FMS knob, you can see it's a little bit more intuitive now. It kind of looks like your computer. You're in the map page and there's all the information. And if you rotate the inner FMS knob, you can see that it goes through all the different pages as opposed to those little boxes which were more ambiguous in the older version. Here I've got the waypoint, auxiliary, flight plan. Here we have the checklist. And then finally we have the nearest. So that's all there is to it. Uh, this will give you a basic idea of how to access the information in the multifunction display. Uh, once again, I'm using the Garmin G1000 Integrated Flight Deck Trainer, which is about $30. You can buy it from the Garmin website. Highly recommended, and it's that simple.